Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the May 2014 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it reads that Pets Plus prepares weekly pay rules for two employees hired on the following terms. So we have a little table here showing some information. So employees have a sales attendant and a cashier. Normal rate of pay, $10 per hour for sales attendant, $120 per day for the cashier. Now, normal days or hours, 40 hours for the sales attendant. So that's per week, I would think, right? Eight, you work five days and eight hours a day. Eight by five is 40. And then you have five days for the week for the cashier. And then the actual time work was 45 hours for the sales attendant and five days for the cashier. Okay, interesting. What's the first thing they're asking us to do here? List two basic source documents used in preparing payrolls. Just for two marks. Okay, Straight, simple and straightforward. So two basic source documents used in preparing payrolls are employee time cards and master timesheets. If you know of any other source documents or basic source documents, as the question says, used in preparing payrolls, I want you to leave your answer as a comment in the comment section below. And what we'll do is we'll combine all the different ones so that way we could learn from each other. Okay, let's take a look at the second part of the question. It says distinguish between voluntary and statutory deduction. So we've seen this in some other parts of the questions. So this is something you really should know. Let's take a look at the answer. So voluntary deductions are amounts taken out of employees' incomes that they have agreed to have deducted. Statutory deductions are amounts taken out that are required by law, for example, income tax and national insurance contributions. So if you have different definitions and you want to share them with us, please put them in the comment section below. And again, sometimes your articulation may be better than mine. I might like yours better than mine. Somebody else may understand it better than mine. And that's fine, right? I never profess to know everything and I'm still trying to learn as I go along here as well. All right. Okay. Now let's take a look at the calculation aspect of this question. All right. So it says complete the Pets Plus payroll sheet provided as an insert for the week ended 26th April 2014, considering the following additional information. So we have a little table down here, particulars, right? So overtime is 1.5 times the normal rate, and we have some deductions. Social Security and Pension Fund, tax deductible. Now, 5% at 1% means 5% of gross income and 1% of gross income. And you make these deductions, you take these away from your, your gross income before you calculate your income tax, which would be 10% of taxable income. Now, uh, I couldn't show the, the insert as they described it here because it was a little too big to show. And even the Excel spread I have, I can't show the whole thing all at once because it'll just be too small. So what I have done is I have recreated the, the, the insert here piece by piece. Now it is, it does go across more to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do whatever is visible. And then as we need to do more pieces, I'm just going to scroll across. So that way you'll be able to see each thing uh, properly and hopefully understand it as we go. So let's start. So the first thing, what they want us to do, they want us to calculate net pay. So net pay means your gross pay minus all of your deductions, including income tax. To find gross pay, we need to add regular pay to the overtime pay, and that's going to give us the gross wages. Okay, so they want the rate, the time, and the total. And as you can see, they have some little numbers in brackets. So one by two means column one, the figure in column one by figure in column. So, so let, let me plug it in and you'll see what I'm talking about. So the rate for the sales attendant, the rate was $10 per hour. And for cashier, the cashier, sorry, it's $120 per day. So let's put the rate for the sales attendant as 10 and cashier is 120. Right, now the time, so the regular time, so across back across here in the table, the normal hours or days is 40 hours for the sales attendant and five days for the cashier. So let's put that 40 hours for the sales attendant and five days for the cashier. And just like, like I said, the total for regular pay for that the particular period of consideration will simply be the figure in column one multiplied by the figure in column two. So 10 by 40 is 400, 120 by five is 600. Now, the next column is the overtime column. So the rate is 1.5 times. Now that actually was given to us across here in the second table where they said overtime is 1.5 times the normal rate. So for the sales attendant, that'll be 1.5 times 10. And that's going to give us $15 per hour. And for the cashier, it's 1.5 times 120. And that's going to give us 180. 
the time. So we need to figure out the overtime for each of these employees. So let's go back across to the first table. So the normal hours or days and time is worked. All right, so for the, for the sales attendant, it's 40 hours, it's the normal, but the sales attendant work 45. So they work five hours more than the normal hours or days. So there are five overtime hours here. What about the cashier? No, five days and five days, so no. So the cashier didn't work any extra days. So the cashier doesn't attract any overtime. So we're gonna put in five hours for the sales attendant and zero for the cashier. And of course, as it says here, total is four times five. That means the figure in column four multiplied by the figure in column five, and that's gonna give us the amount of the overtime wages. So 15 by five is 75, as you can see there for the sales attendant. And for the cashier, it's 180 by zero, and anything by zero is zero. Now, gross wages, that's as you can see, it says three plus six, so the item in column three, plus the corresponding item in column six, and that's gonna give us the item for column seven. So for the sales attendant, it's 400 plus 75, cashier is 600 plus zero, that's gonna be 475 and 600. Okay, so let me scroll across a little bit so we can see the rest of the form. Okay, so now we're gonna be dealing with the deductions, the social security, pensions, total deductions, taxable income, income tax and net pay. And as you can see, they gave you little prompts up here about how to calculate each of these items, right? And I have seen actual tax forms, uh, at least some of the older ones, and this is actually how they were laid out. Okay, so social security, let's go down to the tables. So it says social security, tax deductible 5%, and pension fund tax deductible 1%. Now those percentages are gonna be taken of the gross income. And as a matter of fact, you can see that here. It says social security, 5% of seven, as in 5% of the figure in column seven. And for pension fund, 1% of seven, which again is 1% of the figures in column seven. So for social security, you find 5% of 475 and 600. So we get 2375 for sales attendant, cash is 30. Now we're going to find 1% of the 475 and the 600. That's going to give us $4.75 and $6. Now total deductions, that's 8 plus 9, as in the figure in column 8 plus the figure in column 9. So you're going across, you're adding, going across. And that's going to give us $28.50 and $36. Now taxable income, is, is it says 7 minus 10. So that's, that's the gross wages figure minus the total deductions. So 475 minus 2850, 600 minus 36. That's going to give us 446.50, 564. Lovely. The yeah, income tax now is simply 10% of 11. So 10% of the figure in this column. That's going to give us 4, well, 44.65, I think. And then 56.40. And then finally, our net pay is the item in column 11 minus the item in column 12. So your taxable income, again, with your gross wages minus all the deductions, and then you calculate the tax on that, and that, that tax also has to be taken out from your taxable income, and that will leave us to your net pay or your take-home pay, which as we could see is 401.85 for the sales attendant and 507.60 for the cashier. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the May 2014 POA paper two. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and you might want to check out my website for some free payway handles that you might find interesting and helpful. As per usual guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.